Notre Dame's loss to Louisville is an unbelievably Notre Dame's loss to Louisville is yet another unbelievably frustrating loss for Notre Dame fans. It is a continuation of multiple decades of underperforming in important games, and it feels like on a yearly basis, every single time, the letdown just gets worse. And I, that's a little bit hyperbolic because last year, Notre Dame lost to Marshall and they lost to Stanford with hopes of maybe reaching the college football playoff. That obviously didn't happen, and it's likely not going to happen this year either. Their chances of making it there are zero at this point. After a game like that, and after losing to Ohio State and narrowly almost losing to Duke, we sit here as Notre Dame fans saying to ourselves, who is to blame? Who do we point the finger at to determine how do we get this thing right? And I'm not saying it goes to one person or if it goes to a certain aspect of the university, the athletic program. There has to be blame dealt to somebody. And I've gotten to the point where Notre Dame in the past two years, the way that I have seen them perform and play in games where they need to step up, it is blatantly obvious that that blame does need to go, not all of it, but some of it does need to go to Marcus Freeman. I'm obviously going to hold Jared Parker accountable for the hor horrible play calling. And it's not totally Marcus Freeman's fault that he was forced to move to Parker after Tommy Rees left. They should have paid Andy Ludwig. They didn't. The athletic administration, when Swarbrick was still there, set him up for this level of failure. If they brought in Andy Ludwig, that offense would look completely different. And I don't think any of our concerns right now would be happening because Andy Ludwig is able to have some offensive production with a team that is void of any receiver talent, their best tight end, and their starting quarterback who has been there for a very, very long time. And when Cam Rising has been there, that Utah offense has been phenomenal. And they missed out on that opportunity because of whatever politics were happening behind the scenes that we're not privy to. But outside of the offensive incompetence, and again, I give Marcus Freeman some pass because of what he has dealt with with being forced to let Parker be the one calling plays. But outside of that offensive incompetence, I look at all of the games that they have lost, all of the games that they have been in close battles at halftime, the way that they have entered games with no energy, no aggressiveness, no fight. You got Joe Walt getting put on his ass by a no-name edge rusher. Proof to me that this team is not showing up to battle all four quarters. It has happened too many times that Notre Dame has been flat and then they get punched in the mouth and then while they're getting punched in the mouth, they do not fight back. And when your team visibly is underprepared across the board, when your team clearly lacks the necessary energy to win, that comes down to head coaching. That comes down to your head coach not getting his team prepared for games. That's what that is. When you're in a locker room and your coach isn't delivering a weekly message that gets your team motivated, that is exactly how you're going to play against Duke and against Louisville. Yes, they, they showed a lot of energy against Ohio State, but that is the only game in Marcus Freeman's time as the head coach of Notre Dame that I have felt that Notre Dame has shown up to fight with an opponent. And they ended up faltering at the end of that game, so I don't know how much credit I give them for that because they didn't step up to an important challenge in the end of that game multiple times and failed to close that one out, offensively and defensively. This has happened against Marshall. It has happened against Stanford. It happened against USC last year. And now, this season, it ha almost happened against Duke, and it happened against Louisville. When we have a continuous pattern of failures, and failures for the same reasons, we have to start having that conversation. And I'm, I'm freaking tired of saying at some point we should consider having the conversation. Let's have the conversation now. Marcus Freeman is a very promising young head coach. He is a great recruiter. 
He is somebody who I think in the future down the line will be a great head coach in the NFL or in the college ranks. But we have to admit to ourselves as Notre Dame fans, he was hired way too early in his coaching career. It is commendable. The impact he has had in recruiting, the guys that he has been able to bring in, the guys that in future classes are considering to come play for Notre Dame that I don't know if they end up sticking, but his recruiting efforts are significant. But how does that differentiate him from other coaches who were great recruiters that failed in in in-game coaching? Mario Cristobal just did it against Georgia Tech, and he did it all the time at Oregon. James Franklin's another perfect perfect example because he's recruited really, really well, hasn't necessarily developed the talent to a level where they should be a national championship, Big Ten championship contending team. They've been good, and that's what Notre Dame is going to be the entire time that Marcus Freeman is there. Again, I think that Marcus Freeman at some point is going to be a fantastic coach, but he is so young and early on in his career, it is clear that he is still figuring things out and trying to understand the nuances of of a week-to-week basis of decision-making in games and also preparation for important opponents. It happens every freaking week. Every week. Every time they need to have intensity, they don't have it. And we as Notre Dame fans do not have time to wait for him to figure it out. And if he is James Franklin... Those are not the standards of Notre Dame football. That level of winning, it's it's nice and, and great that Penn State wins nine, sometimes 10 games. Notre Dame is expected to be better than that. And they haven't been for a very, very long time. I, I, I see it as what will likely happen is that Marcus Freeman is going to probably get till the end of the year and until next year. And if he loses... In another game where they should show up, dominate, and win, like Louisville, and they don't end up in that new expanded playoff conversation, you have to move on. I don't know who that next coach is, but I know that I'm writing a blank check to any of the top coaches at big programs across the country. They need to stop skimping. They need to be aggressive. They need to go out and get somebody that is going to have this program in a position to win. But most importantly, the experiment of working with a young coach that has never been a head coach before, they can't do that shit again. They have to. They have to hire somebody that has a long-term track record of success, just like LSU did to you with Brian Kelly, just like USC did with Lincoln Riley. If all the other top programs in the country are doing it, you need to do it as well. Let me know below. Am I off base? Should we give Marcus Freeman more time than two seasons? I'm going to really come to a conclusion at the end of this year instead of saying, let's start having the conversation. I'm going to have a conclusion by the end of this year. But let me know what you think below. Am I jumping? Am I getting ahead of myself? I'm curious what the rest of the Notre Dame fans think. Make sure you check out Bet Online for all of your sports betting needs. For anything that I do betting related, I go on over to betonline.ag and I use promo code BELIEVE50. BetOnline has all of the latest updated odds for the NFL and college football seasons. Anything you need, whether it's futures, live in-game betting, no matter what, your football betting needs are met at BetOnline. And again, make sure you use that promo code BELIEVE50, B-L-E-A-V-5-0 to get a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts.